Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and in this video we'll look at video game references in World of Warcraft. This is not a complete list, just some that I picked out that I liked. Anyway, there's no need for a long drawn out intro to this, I think the video title is pretty self explanatory, so let's dive in. One most people have spotted is in the capital city of Dalaran. In the north east side of the city is an NPC selling flowers called Aerith Primrose. Clearly this is a reference to Aerith Gainsborough from Final Fantasy VII. But most Warcraft players have seen this. One many have not seen is the Blood Elf starting zone Sunshrider Isle. There are two Blood Elf children, one named Jane and the other is called Nova. This is a reference to the Final Fantasy VII character Genova who crops up every now and then in the story. It's also worth noting that the Hawks Strider mounts in Warcraft take more than a little bit of inspiration from the chocobos of Final Fantasy. In World of Warcraft, if you choose to play as a Death Knight, then one of the first quests you have to do is called Grand Theft Palomino. This is the quest you do to earn your mount and sees you taking a trip down to the local village and stealing a horse. You ride the horse back to where you started and that's pretty much how you earn your mount in the game. This is a very obvious reference to Grand Theft Auto where you steal cars or you steal motorbikes if you're feeling suicidal. <laughs> Now a game where you ride a horse which you don't steal, and that's The Legend of Zelda. In Warcraft, there is an NPC called Lincoln in the Ungoro Crater. In the first quest he offers you, Lincoln says he has no idea how he ended up here, but he has a task for you to do for him. This is much like Zelda Link's Awakening on the Nintendo Game Boy, where Link is washed up on the shore of an island, and when he wakes up, he has no idea where he is. Another quest Lincoln offers you is titled It's Dangerous to Go Alone, where you acquire a golden flame from a mob located in the zone. This is a reference to the first Zelda game on the NES where at the beginning you go into a cave and you are told the same message when you're given a sword. In the same zone in Warcraft, near Lincoln, there are two NPCs. One named Larion, who is holding a large mallet, just like the one Mario can get in the arcade game Donkey Kong. The other NPC is called Mugini, who is holding a mallet, although I'm not sure why, because he wasn't in Donkey Kong. <laughs> In the Westfall area of World of Warcraft, the Cataclysm expansion added a quest that had you go to the Jangalode Mine, hiding a box, and then overhear a conversation between two NPC characters who would later turn up in the Dead Mines dungeon in the same zone. Hiding in a box is the preferred method of hiding for Solid Snake in the Metal Gear series of games. <laughs> starting zone you can get a quest called ammo for rumble shot you have to go and retrieve some ammo from a campsite and then take it to the dwarf named rumble shot once you hand it over and complete the quest this starts a scripted set piece where the group of dwarfs will start firing at various targets in the area once they finish firing their guns they turn to the mortar launcher that they are next to and yell mortar combat this is a reference to the theme tune of the original Mortal Kombat game, which went like... I'll play more of this great song, but the YouTube fun police will only allow me to play a very small clip. In the Wrath of the Lich King expansion, achievements were added to the game. If you are lucky enough to earn the chocolate cake recipe, don't get me started on this, you will get the achievement called The Cake Is Not A Lie. This is a reference to the game Portal, which may or may not have featured cake for the player. If there was one game that the original team at Blizzard loved, it was Samurai Showdown. If you look through some old interviews with the original Warcraft development team, one game they say they love playing was Samurai Showdown. Who can blame them? It's a great, although hard as nails, one-on-one -on -one fighting game from the 90s beat-em-up masters SNK. Blizzard loved the game so much that two of the game's realms are named after fighters from it. I'm not going to try and say the names because I'll probably butcher them. I'll just stick to showing them on screen here so you know which ones I'm talking about.
In the capital city of Dalaran, swimming around in the sewers under the city is a shark called Sega CD. This sewer shark is a reference to the game called, well, Sewer Shark on the Sega Mega CD, or if you lived in America, just called the Sega CD, although the game was still called Sewer Shark over there. Poor America, they always used to get shafted by gaming companies during the 90s. If it wasn't Sega blessing Japan and Europe with the Sega Mega Drive and forcing America to have the stupid sounding Genesis, it was Nintendo's second home console looking like this in Japan, like this in Europe, and then this in America. I mean, look at the state of it. In the Wrath of the Lich King expansion, there is a trinket item that you can get called Super Simeon Sphere. The trinket has no gameplay benefits at all, but when activated, it changes your appearance to one of a monkey in a glowing magic ball. This is a reference to the hugely underrated Sega game Super Monkey Ball, which is a game where you have to get to the goal of each level as a monkey inside a ball. The Lost Vikings was actually made by Blizzard years before they made World of Warcraft. It was made by them even before they were called Blizzard and went under the old name of Silicon and Synapsis. Anyway, there's quite a few references to the Lost Vikings in the Alderman dungeon. The main reference is that there are three dwarfs in the dungeon that share the same names and outfits as the three Vikings. If you play as Alliance, these guys give you quests. If you play as Horde, these guys are bosses and they drop items that relate to their abilities in the Lost Vikings game. So Balog, who is the attacking character in the Vikings game, can drop a sword or a bow. Eric, who can run fast and headbutt walls in the game, can drop a helmet or feet item. Olaf, who is the defensive character in the game, can drop two types of shield. Also in Warcraft's Alderman Dungeon, there is a special door that you need to combine two items to open. These two items are the Shaft of the Soul, which is lost backwards, and the Kimura Medallion, which is Vikings backwards. Very hard to say. Finally on this list, we have an item that engineers in World of Warcraft can make, and that's the explosive sheep. When used, a sheep will run towards a mob and blow up, causing damage. This is a clear reference to the tactical warfare game Worms, which featured the same weapon, which had the same effect of blowing up and causing damage. Well, that's your lot. Ah, bye.